Crafty ponies, crafty ponies, sew them, play them, learn them, love them. Crafty ponies riding school. Hello and welcome to the world of crafty ponies. Here is Brown Crafty Pony. All the ponies are made a lovely shape and they all have cotton manes, cotton forelocks and cotton tails so that you can learn to plait. The tail is sewn onto a dock so you can learn to plait the tail. The ponies are really nice shapes so that all the tack and accessories fit crafty ponies just like they would fit real ponies. This is crafty piebald pony. Here's his plaited mane and here's his little plaited tail. With every crafty pony that you get, you get a crafty pony booklet. At the back of the booklet is his passport. You can write your name, your pony's name and the date when you bought him. Inside the booklet there's lots and lots of pony lessons. At the beginning of the book here are the contents. Here we meet Crafty Pony's team. How to be safe around ponies. Pippa Pony Rider says ponies are flight animals which means that they run away when scared. We must make sure that we do not scare our ponies. We must always be calm and quiet around ponies. Izzy Instructress says follow these guidelines to help keep yourself safe around ponies. Number one let your pony know where you are by talking to him gently and kindly. Number two, if you are at the stables, follow your instructress's advice. If you need help, ask. Now, never be stuck, okay? If you're having a problem or you don't know something, there's always people around that know more about horses and ponies than you do. And so just ask them and they'll help you, okay? Always ask if you need help. Number three, riding hats protect your head and should always be worn when riding. It is good to use them when handling ponies too. Gloves protect your hands. Number four, do not run, shout, scream or make sudden movements around ponies. Never be angry around ponies. Okay, so if you're feeling yourself getting cross, make sure that your pony's safe, put him in a field, he's tied up, or he's in a stable, just walk away, okay? If you're angry or you're cross, just walk away. Because ponies don't understand anger, okay? And they, they get upset if people are angry. So just keep calm and then go back to your pony. Number five, do not stand directly in front of the pony. He cannot see you there. Number six, give your pony clear instructions so that he knows what you want him to do. Number seven, wear simple clothing and remove all jewellery so that nothing can get snagged on the pony's hair. Now the ponies have got long forelocks here, long manes here, long tails, got long forelocks and if you've got rings or earrings they can get snagged in the pony's hair. So it's a lot safer to take the rings off and take your earrings out when messing with ponies. Number eight, when you are learning about ponies, it is best to keep well away from their bottoms. Okay, so here they can kick you. So make sure that you keep away from the bottoms. Okay. Page two, wear safe clothing around ponies. Izzy Instructress says, it is important to wear sensible clothes around ponies to keep safe. Number one, hair. If you have long hair, tie it in a plait or a ponytail. So if you look at Pippa Pony Rider here, she's got long hair and it's in a ponytail. Okay, tied up. So it can't get caught. 
Number two, in hot weather, it is better to have a shirt to cover your shoulders. So like this shirt covers my shoulders, if I fell off, um, you normally land maybe with your shoulders first and your shoulders can get scuffed. So keep your shoulders covered up. Don't wear little tiny tops because that can, um, if you fall off, then you could really hurt your skin. Number three, jewellery should be removed. Like we said before, rings, earrings, uh, bangles, anything at all, take it off before you mess with ponies because it can get caught on the hair. Number four, wear waterproofs when it is cold and raining to keep warm and dry. So when you're riding, you do get warm because it's an activity that makes you warm. But if it's raining and it's cold and you're riding, you start to shiver, it's, it's not good. So if the weather's cold, make sure you get lots of layers on because you can always take them off if you get warm. Number five, keep clothing simple. Toggles and trimmings on clothes and footwear can get caught in pony's hair. So again, we're talking about things on your clothes which can get snagged in the pony's hair. So riding clothes never have little bits and bobs and dangly things on because they can get stuck. So keep clothing very, very plain. Wear sturdy, plain footwear that supports your ankles with small heels and plain flat soles. Okay, you don't want big chunky things when you're riding horses. So st strong boots, like riding boots that are nice and smooth with um, a plain sole and a little heel. So when your foot goes on the stirrup, it's well supported, your ankle's well supported, but then your foot can't slip through the stirrup. Okay, you should have a little heel on the back of the boot. Number seven, gloves protect your hands. Take them off for grooming and tacking up. There are lots of nice clothes to wear that are safe around ponies. That's what Pippa's saying. Oh, we take the gloves off for grooming because when we're grooming ponies, we need our hands to feel for any little bits of scabs or cuts, any heat. So we don't want gloves on when we're grooming. Okay. Number three, page three. Approach your pony safely. Pippa Pony Rider says, when you want to approach your pony, walk quietly to his shoulder from the front. Do not approach your pony from behind or you may startle or upset him. Always talk to your pony so that he knows where you are. So here's Pippa going towards the pony and she's saying, hello Crafty. So uh, Crafty Pony knows where she is. So here's Crafty and here's Harry. So Harry wants to approach Crafty, okay? So he's going to come to the front and towards his shoulder. He's going to say, hello, Crafty, and then give him a little pat or a stroke, okay? Pony's like being scratched. And away we go. So what you don't want to do is approach towards his head, okay? because that's dangerous. And what you don't want to do is approach towards his bottom, okay? Like that, because then he could kick you because you've startled him. But if you go around and you go towards his shoulder from the front, say, hello, Crafty, give him a little scratch. That's safe, okay? Name some points of the pony. Harry Horse Rider says, here are six points of the pony. It's fun to learn about ponies. So here's Crafty. Forelock, here's the forelock. Mane, here's the mane. Here's his back, there. Here's his tail. Here's his shoulder. And here's his hoof, here, okay? Also, this is his front leg or foreleg, and this is his hind leg, near side and off side. Izzy Instructress says, There are two sides to the pony. We call one the near side and one the off side. See if you can learn which is which. 
So this is the off side. So you're looking at the off side and this is the near side. So now you're looking at the near side. See how the mane grows on one side of the neck. In Spain, they like the mane of the stallion on the near side. Like that. And the mane of the mare on the off side. So in Spain, that would be a stallion. And then in Spain, that would be a mare. Some ponies have a split mane. This means that the hair grows evenly and falls on both sides of the neck. So some of the mane is that way and some of the mane is that way. Okay, so some's that side and some is that side and it's even down the middle. Blind spots. Gary Groom says... Did you know that ponies can see all around except directly in front of them or directly behind them? These areas are called blind spots. This is one of the reasons why you do not approach a pony directly from the front. You approach him towards his shoulder so that he can see you. When you are moving around your pony, stay near to him and keep talking to him and touching him firmly but gently so that even if he cannot see you he knows where you are through hearing and touch. Another way of moving around your pony is to get well away from him when going past his bottom. This is advisable with ponies that you do not know very well. So here Gary is saying ponies have a blind spot right behind their bottom and right in front of their face. The pony will turn his head to see you when you are behind him. He can see you when you are further in front of him or standing at the side. So here it says ponies cannot see directly in front of their face or directly behind their bottom. <clears throat> so if you are behind a pony to plait his tail, for example, he may turn his head to keep his eye on you. If you stand to the side a little, when you are in front of the pony, he can see you. So here Kraft is saying, I can see you. So that's when you're a little bit further away, or if he, he turns his head to have a look. Let's have a look. So if, if Harry is here, Crafty can't see him. But if Harry is here, Crafty can see him. So Harry approaches Crafty towards his shoulder from the front, gives him a stroke and if Harry wants to walk around Crafty to this side he then keeps his hand on Crafty, he's talking to him, it's like hello Crafty, he's talking to him and he keeps his hand on the pony so the pony knows where he is, okay, and now he's on this side. What you don't want to do is just do this, okay, because the pony, he doesn't know where you are. So it's better to stay close to him, keep your hand on him, say hello pony, hello, I'm just coming around this side and then he knows where you are because you're talking to him. Now for example, here's Harry, he's going to go around, he's going to plait Crafty's tail. When he stood here, plaiting his tail, Crafty, the pony, will probably turn his head a little bit so that his eye can see Harry. Okay. Remember, don't go close to ponies if you don't know them. So if you want to walk around a pony that you don't know, give them a pat. But then come out, come well away from the pony. Come right out of his space. Okay, keep well away from the pony. Go to the front and then approach his shoulder again. Hello, pony. What do ponies eat? Gary Groom says, Ponies are herbivores. This means that they eat plants. The fruit and seeds of the plant are more nutritious than the leaves. Horses like to eat grass and can eat for around 14 to 18 hours a day. In the winter, when there is not much grass available, 
we give our ponies extra food to keep them fit and healthy. We give them dried grass in different forms of feed and we can give them extra feed if they need it. During the summer months, farmers cut the long grass and dry it for three or four days in the sunshine to make hay. In the winter, when the pony is in the stable, we can feed the pony with hay, which is just dried grass. Straw, which is the dried stalks of grain plants, can also be fed. Sometimes you can see large round or square plastic covered bales in the fields. These contain haylage, which can be fed to ponies instead of hay. It can be fed to ponies in the field and in haylage rig, or in the stable in a hay net or loose on the floor. When ponies are working hard, they need extra feed called concentrates. Special horse and pony mix can be bought from your local feed merchant. This may contain a mixture of oats, maize, peas, barley, alfalfa, chaff, bran, vitamins and minerals to keep your pony healthy. Extra feed also needs to be given to mares in foal, lactating mares, youngsters, working stallions, old ponies, and competition horses. So here for Crafty we've got some hay in a little hay net. Um, we've made the hay net out of a little net that you can get onions or oranges or lemons in. We've chopped the top off and put a little bit of string through it and then we've chopped some grass down and we've dried it and we've put it in the hay net for Crafty to eat like this. Also we're giving him some water in a bucket. There. And we're giving him some horse and pony nuts in a little bucket. Horses should always have water available. Now you can make your own buckets out of the tops of aerosol cans. So you can see this is a, a, a lovely little bucket, just the right size for Crafty Pony. So you can make your own bucket and you can make your own hay net. Now hay nets should be tied fairly high up off the floor so that when all the hay is being eaten the um, net doesn't trail all over the floor. If you tied the hay net down here um, they could get his leg in it. So it's better up here um, and some people instead of putting the hay in the hay net they just take, take the hay and just put the hay straight on the floor. Okay, um, that's a little bit more natural for ponies because they're eating with the heads down, right? Ponies eat with the head down here and that's more natural for them than eating with the head up here. So it can be better to put the haylage straight on the floor. What do ponies drink? Gary Groom says, Ponies need access to clean, fresh water at all times. The only time we do not give our pony a drink is immediately after a lot of hard work and the pony is blowing, which means breathing hard and sweating. In this situation, we lead him around until he is breathing normally and not sweating and then offer him a drink. So if Crafty is being out riding, so here he is. So here's Harry and Harry is riding Grey Crafty Pony and they've been for a nice big ride and Crafty Pony is sweating so that means he's all sticky here and, and wet and he's blowing. <sighs> okay so Harry will either sit on him and walk him round until he stops sweating and blowing or he'll get off and he'll lead him by the reins. He'll slacken off the girth and he'll lead him around with the reins until he's uh, not sweating anymore and his breathing is back to normal. Then Harry will take the tack off and then offer the pony a drink. Okay, so where's Grey Crafty Pony? So Harry's taken all the tack off Grey Crafty Pony and he'll then offer him a drink. If your 
pony is in the stable, you can give him two or more buckets of fresh water every morning and evening or install an automatic drinker. The pony drinks from a small bowl fastened to the wall and the water drinker automatically refills itself. Keep all buckets and drinkers clean and regularly check that the drinker is working correctly. Okay, so um, every day check that the water drinker or the bucket is clean. So we'll give it a quick swill round with the hose pipe and a sponge and then the water in the bucket or in the drinker is always nice and fresh. If your pony is in the field, you will need to give him buckets of water every morning and evening or you could fill a big tub with water from a hose pipe. Keep all water, tubs and buckets clean and full of fresh water. You may have a stagnant pond in your field. This is not suitable water for your pony. He needs clean, fresh water available at all times. You may have a stream in your field. This is a great way for your pony to get fresh water. Ponies need regular exercise. Izzy Instructor says, Ponies are like us. They need regular exercise to stay fit and healthy. If your pony lives in the field, then he will keep himself healthy and relatively fit by walking around. However, if your pony lives in the stable, he will need daily exercise. There are different ways to make sure that your pony gets the regular exercise that he needs. Number one, turn him out in the field. You can turn out your pony in the field for one or two hours or the whole day. So here we've got a nice field. We've got water in the field. And Crafty can walk around and keep himself relatively fit. Okay. Number two, on the lunge. You can lunge your pony for about 20 minutes a day and that will help to keep him fit too. So here we have Pippa is going to bring Crafty out. So lunging, Crafty is going to go in circles around Pippa. Okay. On the end of a lunge line. This is a lunge caverson, you see it's got the rings on to fasten this special lunge line to. And Crafty will walk round Pippa and then he will trot round her. Okay? So in real life the pony will be quite a long way away from the rider. Okay? But you get the idea. So that's lunging. Hacking out. You can ride your pony out on a hack in the countryside or quiet lanes for an hour or two. So this is a lovely way to get your pony exercise. So we'll get Harry again. So here's Harry and Grey Pony and they're just going to go for a nice little walk around in the countryside. Okay. Ride in an arena. You can exercise your pony in the arena for 40 minutes or more. Okay, so this is um, a little riding arena. It's a standard size. It's 20 metres by 40 metres. Okay, this is a little mini version for Crafty Pony. So we'll get Harry again. So you can see in the arena, there's markers around the arena and Harry and Crafty can do the exercise in the arena. So this is going across the arena, they can do circles, okay? So this will um, get Harry and Crafty Pony relatively fit, okay? So arenas can be made out of sand, um, plastic chip rubber chip um, so it's a nice surface for the horse horses to walk on lead out you can lead out your pony
for 10 to 20 minutes or longer. Sometimes if your pony's had an injury, um, the vet wants you to lead him around to keep him exercised. Um, he's not fit enough to be ridden um, or exercised in any other way and the vet doesn't want him in the field so he might be in the stable and the vet might say well take your pony out for a walk for 10 minutes um, and that will do him good. So here is Harry and he's going to take his pony for a little lead out. So Harry is in between the shoulder and the head and he's just taking Crafty for a little lead out and that's a very gentle form of exercising a horse. Okay. And we can put the horse in a horse walker. You can put your pony on a horse walker for 10 to 20 minutes. So a horse walker is a machine like this. Um, it's got a fence round it and you tie your pony up. Okay, so the pony gets tied up in the machine and then the machine moves round and the pony moves round with the machine. So that's a way of exercising a pony without a person having to do it. Pony colours and markings. Pippa Pony Rider said there are many colours of ponies. Here are just a few. So this is brown with a flaxen mane and tail. So that's like brown crafty pony here. In there. So this is this one. Brown with a flaxen mane and tail. Then we have piebald. So piebald is black and white and you can remember piebald because it's like a magpie. So like a magpie is black and white, piebald is black and white. Dark grey. So we don't have a dark grey but we've got a black crafty pony with a pale mane and tail. Normally black ponies would have uh, black manes and tails. Palomino, oh, this is a Palomino, so he is, um, it could be an orange colour all the way down to a cream colour like this with a flaxen or a white mane and tail. Light grey, so here we have a light grey pony with um, Normally this would be a light grey mane as well, or they could have white manes um, or even black manes. If you have a look in the fields near where you live, you can see if you can identify different colours of horses and ponies and you can get a lot more information about different colours of horses and ponies either on the internet or from books. Easy Instructor says, here are a few of the white markings that ponies may have on their faces and legs. A sock is white hair around the fetlock joint. And a stocking is white hair higher up the leg towards the knee or the hock. Now our ponies don't have any markings on their legs. Um, but what we have done, we've given them some little pull-on so socks and stockings so that if you wanted to you could um, pull on these little socks and stockings you see like that okay so a high up one tall one is a stocking and a short one like that a short that's a sock These are face markings that you'll see on ponies. Crafty ponies don't have face markings, but a little tiny mark here, at the bottom of his nose is a snippet. A little mark here on his forehead is a star. A stripe goes down his face. A star and stripe is where you've got a little 
star here and then a stripe down his face and a blaze is where you've got a lot of white down the middle of his face. Stallions, mares, etc. Gary Groom says, here are the different names for girl and boy horses and ponies. Can you learn them all? So we'll start off with the boys, men. So a stallion is a male horse, four years old and over. And he can also be called an entire. So a stallion is a male horse that can have babies. A gelding is a castrated male horse. That means he can't have babies. Now in the boys, you've got a colt, a male horse up to three years old. A yearling colt is a male horse one to two years old. And a colt foal is a male horse up to one year old. So you could say that's a foal. So it could be a boy foal or a girl foal. Okay, if it's a boy foal, you call it a colt foal. And if it's a girl foal, you'd call it a filly foal. So ladies, a mare is a female horse four years old and over. A brood mare is a female horse four years old and over and she's used for breeding, not, not so much for riding. And then in the, in the girls, we've got a filly who is a female horse up to three years old. A yearling filly is a female horse one to two years old, so that's a younger one. And a filly foal is a female horse up to one year old. Fun pony facts. Did you know the hairs that grow all over the pony are called a coat? Ponies have different coats in summer and winter. As winter approaches, the summer hair falls off and is replaced with long winter hair to keep the pony dry when it rains. There is a fluffy undercoat of hair which keeps the pony warm. So if you look at a pony in the winter time, it will have long hair and then if you move the long hair to one side and look closely, the hair underneath is quite fluffy and this keeps him warm. If ponies are stabled in winter and being ridden, they may sweat when working because they are too hot. Ponies can have all or some of their winter coats clipped off to keep them cooler and prevent sweating when exercising. When the ponies have finished exercising, they need to wear rugs to keep warm. Because we've taken the hair off, then they need to have rugs on. So here we have Pippa and she's put a rug on her crafty pony here to keep him warm. This is what you would do if you had a clipped pony. So the rug replaces the hair that you've clipped off. The height of a pony is measured in hands. Historically, this was an easy way to measure a horse when no measuring tape was around. A hand is four inches or 10 centimetres. So that's a hand. And the pony is measured from the ground to the top of his withers. So here are crafty ponies with us. So to measure crafty pony, we'd go one hand, two hand, three hand, four hand, and then two fingers, which is like two inches. So a crafty pony would be four, uh, four hands, two inches. A pony which measures 50 inches, 120 centi 27 centimetres, would be called 12 2 and then H H. This means 12 hands, two inches, hands high. So here we have a picture of Crafty with his summer coat on and then a pony with a winter coat on, very fluffy. Then this is a partially clipped winter coat. So here are the long hairs and then here round his legs and his tummy, he's had his hair clipped off. It says here, ponies can sleep standing up. So here's a pony and sometimes you see them looking like this and you think, oh, are they a bit sad or a bit ill? And it's, no, they're just having a sleep. 
Ponies have lots of short rests and sleeps instead of one long sleep like us. So this diagram is showing a pony that is being measured at 12.2. Ponies teeth. Danny the dentist says, ponies have between 36 and 40 teeth. Ponies grind their food with their big back cheek teeth with a sideways motion. Here's the big back teeth here. So I'm crafty. The big back teeth would be right up here. Ponies have baby teeth, which then get replaced by adult teeth. At five years old, a pony usually has all his adult teeth. There is a gap between the front teeth, which are the incisors here, and the back teeth, the cheek teeth here. So when you put um, your thumb in the pony's mouth to make him open his mouth, there's no teeth here. You don't put your finger here because he could close his mouth and bite your finger. But here, there's no teeth, so it's safe. Pony's teeth can wear unevenly, causing sharp edges which can hurt the pony's tongue or cheek. Your pony needs to have his teeth checked by the equine dentist every 6 to 12 months. The dentist puts a speculum into the pony's mouth which holds the mouth open. It does not hurt the pony. Most ponies do not bother about this contraption. It doesn't look very nice at all, but most don't seem to bother. The dentist, and what, that, what this does, it's called a speculum, that stops the pony being able to close his mouth and bite the dentist. The dentist puts his hand into the pony's mouth and feels for any sharp edges. Now, the reason there might be sharp edges is because these big back teeth here, they grind the food like this. Now, if they go right the way across, then the teeth will stay nice and smooth. But sometimes they only go partially across. And pony's teeth keep coming up through the um, jaws. Okay, The teeth are always coming up. And the teeth get worn and this edge, because it's not being ground off, it can go keep growing and get sharp. And then the dentist has to file that off or it will just go sharper and sharper and then hurt his cheek, you see. If there are sharp edges on the teeth, he rasps them off. This is called floating. It does not hurt the pony. This is what the pony's teeth look like here. There are 12 front teeth called incisors here six on the top jaw which is at the top of his mouth here and six on the bottom jaw there are 24 back teeth called cheek teeth here 12 premolars which are at the front here six on the top and six on the bottom jaw and 12 molars which are right at the back six on the bottom jaw and six on the top jaw ponies can also have up to four canine teeth which are also known as tusks and these are like little fangy type teeth here and they might have them and they might not. Native ponies of the UK and Ireland. In the UK and Ireland we are so fortunate because we have so many different breeds of horses and ponies. So we have um, shown you on this map where the native ponies originate from. Here are the areas where some of our pony breeds come from. Now they live all over the country and even other parts of the world. These mountain and moorland ponies are very hardy, intelligent, good doers and make good children's riding ponies. Good doers means that these little native ponies, they can survive on quite poor um, nutrition okay so when they're on the mountain in moorland they might not be very good grass in the winter time or hardly any and the the ponies could uh, manage very very well on quite poor forage um, and keep healthy so we'll just have a little quick look around right at the top up here in the shetland isles is a little shetland pony 
Further down at the Outer Hebrides is the Eriskay Pony. Then across into the Scottish Highlands is the uh, Scottish Highland Pony. Down into the Pennines, we've got the Dales Pony and the Fell. Into Wales, we've got the Welsh Pony with there's four A, B, C and D um, Welsh ponies of different types. Then down here, we've got the Exmoor. Um, then across into Devon, we've got the Dartmoor Pony. And then over here, we've got the New Forest Pony. Over in Ireland, we've got the Connemara Pony and the Kerry Bog Pony. And all the ponies are a little bit different to each other, but they are all hardy intelligent and really great riding ponies for children so if you go to any local shows and you see any of our native breeds of ponies give them your full support they are super little ponies now let's learn about ponies feet harry horse rider says it is important to learn how to look after your pony's feet so that your pony stays fit and healthy Please do not try to pick up a pony's foot without an expert to help you, unless of course you've done it lots and lots of times before and you're safe. If your pony is kept in a stable, he will need to have his feet picked out with a hoof pick every day to keep them clean. You must also pick out your pony's feet before riding. To pick up your pony's front foot, stand near the pony's shoulder facing his bottom, pat his shoulder Run your hand down his leg and to the fetlock, your pony should pick up his foot. The fetlock is the bottom of the leg, there's a joint there. Um, crafty pony just has straight legs, but a real pony has a joint here, and that's called the fetlock joint. And then underneath the fetlock joint at the bottom is his foot or his hoof. Before you pick out your pony's feet, um, it's best to tie them up so they don't wander about. So we'll just put the head collar on Crafty Pony. If you don't have a head collar and lead rope for your Crafty Pony, you can make yourselves one. So here is a little rope halter that we have made okay and you can make this rope halter yourself by going on the crafty ponies website and having a look at things to make all you need is a little piece of cord or string okay and then you just knot it you see nice little rope halter there for your pony and you can make this yourself so here is harry so i'm going to hold the pony for harry so harry's going to get his hoof pick and he's going to approach Crafty to the shoulder, you see. So, hello Crafty, he's going to stroke Crafty. Then he's going to put his hand down Crafty's shoulder, down his leg to his fetlock. And then hopefully Crafty will pull up his foot and then Harry will pick out his foot with the hoof pick. Okay, now it's really important you never kneel down around horses. Okay, you can bend down like this, but you never kneel down with your knees on the floor, it's dangerous. Now Harry's going to pick out Crafty's back leg. So he's going to come along, keep his hand on Harry. Hello, Harry. And he's going to put his hand down Crafty's leg, pick up Crafty's foot, and pick out his foot with the hoof pick. Okay, and then he's going to turn and say, thank you, Crafty. And then here we'll go and do the other side. To pick up his hind foot, stand by your pony's hind quarters, facing his tail like Harry did. Run your hand down his leg to his fetlock. Your pony should pick up his foot. Here's a picture of some hoof prints, and here are the parts of the bottom of the foot on a real pony. The outside of the foot is called the hoof. Here. Frank the farrier says, if horses and ponies get a lot of work, they may need to have shoes put on their feet. These horseshoes are made of metal and nailed on. This does not hurt the pony. It takes many years of training to be able to shoe a horse or pony correctly. So Kraft is looking at these going, oh, new shoes. Ponies' feet are hard and strong. Your farrier will need to 
trim your pony's feet regularly to keep them in good shape. Now pony's feet, little native ponies like these, they're very hard, very strong and most of the time they don't actually need shoeing but if you're doing competitions and you need studs in the shoes or if you're doing a lot of road work your farrier will probably say you need to put shoes on but a lot of the time with these ponies you don't need shoes. Hello, how to plait your pony's mane. Pippa Pony Rider says, follow these step-by-step -step instructions to plait your pony's mane to look smart at the show. Because Crafty Pony is small, we only have five plaits here, but you can put lots of plaits in your pony's mane or just a few. So this pony has been plaited up already and he's got lots of plaits, but we're just going to put five plaits in this pony's mane. Number one. Comb your pony's mane and forelock to get rid of knots and tangles. So here we have a little comb that is like a little mane and tail comb. And we can comb Crafty's mane and his forelock to get rid of knots and tangles. Number two. Divide your pony's mane into equal sections and fasten loosely with a plaiting band. Plaiting bands are small elastic bands that you can get from your local tack shop. So here we have some plaiting bands. We've got white ones here. You can get different colours of plaiting bands to suit your pony's mane. So using the comb we'll put lighting band in Plait each section of the mane and fasten the end of each plait securely with a plaiting band. I'll turn him round and then you can maybe see. I'll try and plait upside down. So you cross that one over that one and cross that one over that one, cross that one over that one, cross that one over that one, you see, cross that one over, cross that one over, cross that one and keep crossing the outside one over the middle one all the way to the bottom. Okay, and then when you get to the bottom, put the plaiting band in. This time we're going to tie it a bit more tightly. And then and then it holds it securely. Okay? And now I'm going to plait all the other ones. Number four. Fold up each plait and fasten securely with another plaiting band. So Crafty Pony's mane is a bit scruffy. If we just fold it in half and then fold it again, trying to put all the end bits inside. And then put a platin band round it. Can you see? With a real pony, if you're going to be plaiting them on a regular basis, you'd normally trim the mane so that the ends of the mane were all neat and tidy and they were relatively short. When you've got a long mane and it's a bit raggedy at the end like this, 
it can be difficult to do these kind of plaits and oftentimes on a, a long mane like this you can put a running plait in your pony's mane and you can put a running plait in crafty pony's mane and that will show you how to put a running plait in crafty pony's mane in another video so here you can see his little plaited mane and here it says plait your pony's forelock the same way okay so I'll, I'll have to do him upside down then you can see so I'll plait it upside down so over oops come here over it's a bit funny plaiting upside down over 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 oops there we are when you get to the bottom Uh, put a platin band in it. Remember you can get platin bands from your local tax shop. Okay, so there's Crafty Pony with his plaited mane looking very smart. Now how to plait your pony's tail. Paper Pony Rider says follow the step-by-step -step instructions to plait your pony's tail ready for a show. Number one, comb your pony's tail to get rid of knots and tangles. Now normally we don't often comb ponies tails because it can um, you know, pull the hair out but when we're going to plait them we really don't really want to knots and tangles in them. So this little comb out of the grooming kit works really well. This is going to be a bit more difficult doing this upside down. Number two, take a small section of hair from the centre left and right at the top of the tail as shown. So we take a little bit of hair from the top and put it there. And then you see he's got a dock. You take the hair right from the side, okay? So right from that edge, and put it there. It sticks there, it's quite good. Not like a real one, a real tail wouldn't stick like that. Then take a little bit of hair from the other side, okay? Uh, make a plait okay so we're going to make one plait so that goes over there and that goes over there like that now I'll just hold them and then it says number four here take a small section of hair from the left of the tail just underneath the plait join it together with the section of hair from the plait as shown then number five, it says plait. So we take a little bit of hair from the side of his tail there, join it with this one and then make a plait. So this is a central bit, then we just get a bit from the side, put it with this one, go over the central bit. Get a bit from the side and make a plait. Get a bit from the side, join it with your hair and make a plait. So you can see how that flat plait is forming down the tail. And each time take it from the very side of the tail and then it's very neat. So from the very side of the tail and then from the very side of the tail there we are, oops and then when you've got part way down the dock about three quarters of the way down the dock you can then start making a normal plait then put an elastic band in it. Now with a real horse's tail 
you then fold this under so with crafty pony we leave it like that but with a real horse you'd get the end and you'd fold it under and you'd fasten it like that but on crafty pony it looks a bit funny so we just leave it dangling down okay so that's how to plait your crafty pony's mane and tail as in here and then on the back page remember there's your pony passport don't forget that on the crafty ponies website which is www.craftyponies.co.uk or craftyponies.com there are lots and lots of video lessons and lots of things to make for your crafty ponies so check out the website check out the videos and enjoy your ponies bye for now Crafty ponies, crafty ponies, so them, play them, learn them, love them, crafty ponies riding school.